In this video, I want to continue to talk about model representation in factor analysis. So in the last video, we were talking about the vector of equations interpretation of models in factor analysis. And we said that it was essentially equivalent to having, in this case, uh, one regression equation for each of the observed characteristics. So we had a regression equation for insomnia, and we also had a regression equation for nausea, and the dots here indicating that we could also write the same relationship for suicidal thoughts and also for hyperventilation. It is important to stress that each of these equations contains things which are fixed across individuals in our sample and things that vary. The things that are fixed are the weightings of the unobserved factors on the observed characteristics. So that's in this case lambda 1 1, lambda 1 2, lambda 4 1 and lambda 4 2 as well as all the weightings in between. The things that differ between individuals are the actual values, the actual scores of these hidden factors for different individuals. So in this case, eta1 and eta2. So it's just important to stress that eta1 here actually represents a vector which has different values for each different individual in our sample. So we have sort of eta1 1, 1 through to eta 1n. And we could write down a similar sort of vector for eta 2. Another thing to mention about factor analysis is why it is actually different to just multiple regression, because on the face of it, each of these individual equations just looks like a simple multiple regression equation. Well, one of the ways in which it's different is that the only thing which we actually observe is the left-hand side. All of these other things, e to 1, e to 2, as well as the weights of the unobserved characteristics, as well as the unique factors e to 1 through e to 4, each of these things are unobserved. So in some way we have to estimate them. Anyway, what we can actually do in the vector of equations model representation is we can stack each of these equations on top of each other. So we can have as our left hand side y1 through y4 as a vector is equal to some sort of matrix, which we're going to define in a minute, times our factor loading, so that's, oh sorry, our specific factor scores, e to 1 and e to 2, plus our vector of our unique disturbance term. So that's e to 1 through, sorry, epsilon 1 through epsilon 4. And then just actually trying to replicate what we have here in equation form, we can formulate our matrix, which we haven't filled in yet. It's just going to have the specific values of the weights on the unobserved characteristics. So that's lambda 1, 1, and then lambda 1, 2 as its first row, and then as the final row, we would have lambda 4, 1, and lambda 4, 2. So things to note about this. Essentially what we've done is we have stacked equations rather than observations here. And so that's just something to bear in mind. Essentially each of these individual things, y1 through four, y4, really represent a vector of observations. But we kind of forget about that in the vector of equations formalism of factor analysis models. So essentially what we can do here is we can actually replace our system of four equations by a single vector equation, which is just that y is equal to some matrix lambda, or capital lambda, which is this one here, times our vector of unobserved characteristics plus our vector of disturbance terms, epsilon. And note that this is a very compact way of writing what in principle is actually quite a complicated system of equations. But one thing to stress about this way of writing a factor analysis model is that as implicitly we've kind of forgotten about the fact that y1 through y4 actually represent vectors of observations. And we've also forgotten about the fact that essentially e to 1 and e to 2 also, as I expressed earlier, represent vectors of different values or different scores of those factors for different individuals. I should also say that epsilon 1 through epsilon 4 also unsurprisingly represent vectors of unique disturbance terms which are different for each individual. So that brings us on to the discussion of the matrix representation of factor analysis, which is that which we're going to discuss in the next video.